nonsense of royalty he ruled during his respective tenures as Labour Minister, Governor of the South African Reserve Bank and Finance Minister. One last time, the red carpet rolled out for the Duke of Mahoba's Louvre, who will no longer be with us here. But here in South Africa is where he did his job until he didn't. The eulogy delivered by the President of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa, sums it up. A great loss we have all suffered, but a life well led from which we can all learn, served with integrity in the exile, a man with a larger than life personality, because he touched the lives of so many people. He had a gift to connect with people and made them feel that they mattered. He looked for the good in each person and easily found it. He taught us that public service is noble. That's what the president said in that eulogy. Speaker after speaker before the president spoke, talking a tale of courage and sacrifice Tito Mboweni displayed throughout his period of public service. How much do we have? A man who was itching to go back to his roots and indeed Tito Mboweni returned to Limpopo to Sasegani, to Mahobasluf, where he wanted to spend the last days of his life. I reminded he chose to be buried here where his umbilical cord fell off at his ancestral place, Bodweni, where the entourage is headed to. Lefilong leo kalana ya kawe elotilo Again, speaker after speaker explicitly stating the love he had for his people here at home and stating that that love was not going to be diminished by any difficult circumstances. It was only and only going to be dissolved by death which brought us here today. And that's the reason you have seen hundreds of people from all walks of life paying their tributes but perhaps still left with a huge question mark why why did we have to lose you now you the duke of mahobas Luf. We also saw tribute by former Premier of Limpopo, Mwako uh, Ramatlodi, who stated, and I quote, we are not ready, we were not ready for you to leave us to a place of no return. He was unique citizen of the world. He has run his race and kept his faith. Tribute by his colleague, Colin Coleman, saying, well, he was stubborn, but in a good way, which reminds me of a story that was shared by Tito Mboweni's niece, Nklamolo Mboweni, yesterday during the public viewing at his family home in Sasegani. She told me that sometimes, and I quote, sometimes I would block and unblock him on WhatsApp whenever we had disagreements. The tough uncle Tito that you used to see in Parliament was the tough uncle Tito here at home. He was also strict on budget, even here at home. Before asking for any single cent for grocery, he wanted to know the budget and you had to throw it down. Tells me he put us through school he prioritized everyone in the family he loved his brother she tells me he loved his sister and his children his three sons that you saw taken to the podium speaking highly of this man Tito Mboweni and Nkamolo also told me that he 
being the most successful one in the family, he made sure to protect his siblings, taking care of them financially. And I remember her fighting back tears, saying, I'm going to miss this man. So we are still just waiting for the entourage to come out of the Nkwankua Stadium. I imagine this is the stadium where he used to come, perhaps during his spare time, just to spend time and watch the sport that I understand he loved watching. And coming down here, and, and just reminds me, walking through R71, which I know is the road that he used to use coming down here from Mahoba Sluf, where earlier you saw the entourage rushing down here for this funeral service. And of course, that was definitely his last journey through the quiet road of R71, passing through Zanin town, which I guess that's one of the towns he definitely had to go to to serve or to check on the shelves that tin fish that you had speaker after speaker mentioning today. But that town, Zanin, I know that it's a town that he loved so dearly. And it's a town that is under Zanin local, Zanin local municipality, a tropical town established in 1919 and played a town five years later in 1924. So as we are still waiting here at the gate or exit of Nguankua Stadium, just waiting for the hairs and the procession to make its way to the Bodoni Cemetery, as my colleague Samkele Masego mentioned, that this is eventually going to be a family affair. Only family is going to be allowed there. So this tells you, however, about the man who loved the rural life, and that's according to Ntlamolo as well, and I will keep mentioning her because I remember her taking just about two chairs to sit behind the tent in which some mourners gathered yesterday in Sasegani. She tells me that he loved rural life, which is why after resigning in 2021, he chose to come back here and he would also discourage them if ever they wanted to leave the province and reside in a different one. But as you can see, the procession is definitely now going out of the Nguangua Stadium, now navigating its way through the Nguangua Township. We will be bringing you these live visuals throughout until the Badwini Cemetery where this giant is going to be laid to rest. <laughs>